In this video, we're going to be exploring the behavior of materials like rubber and polymers. And these behave differently to the way that something like a steel spring would behave. Now with this one here, and I've got another video where I explain about Hooke's law, as you apply a force to an object, we get this linear region where the extension is proportional to the force being applied. But we get a different kind of behavior when we're looking at rubber and polymers. So let's have a look at rubber first of all. In the simplest format, we've got our retort stand, uh, and all I'm gonna do is just hang a rubber band uh, from this part of the clamp. We can then apply a load to it, and then what we can do is we can measure the total length of that. We can take off the original length to find out the extension of that material. And the key thing here is that as you're loading it up with masses, we can obviously work out the weight, which tells us the force being applied, but as you start to unload it, what you might notice is that your values for the extension are slightly different. And in actual fact, the way that rubber behaves is it has a different loading curve to an unloading curve. And of course, when you're taking measurements, you wanna make sure that the ruler is held vertically. So you might wanna ensure that you've got a set square to do that. And also you might have a marker um, somewhere on the mass and that might point to the scale on the ruler to again, reduce any errors in those measurements. But when you plot the data, we're interested in the force being applied as it's loaded and unloaded and how that changes the extension. And what you might see is a graph that looks like this. We have this curved line as we're loading it, and then we have a slightly lower curve as we're unloading it. And actually the area between these two is equal to the energy transferred to that rubber as it's stretching and then relaxing. And of course, uh, if we're adding energy to it, or transferring energy to it, that means in this case its internal store, its thermal energy is going to increase. And what you find is with things like rubber, if you were to stretch them and relax them and stretch them and relax them, the object actually heats up. So that's the way that we can look at rubber in a kind of very, very simple way. We can of course do the same thing if we're investigating a polymer. So this one here uh, is just a piece of plastic. This is a segment of a shopping bag and I'm sure you can work out where I've been shopping to get this. And all you need to do is cut out a strip and then again we're going to be loading that strip to look at how it behaves. Now sometimes it's a little bit hard to actually attach that strip to the retort stand and that's where I've got these things here. So we can actually firmly attach the strip so in this, this one here, uh, what we need to do is we just need to um, have this small bar. We put the small bar uh, into the material like that. We fold it over and then I've just got this white piece over here. And then what we can do is we can clamp that into position. Now this is a purpose made strip tester which only has one purpose, and that's to test strips of material. But you can do something similar using something like a bulldog clip and a pencil. Uh, but I'm sure there's a way that you can actually work out how this attaches. And as I pull that through, uh, what we can see now, if I just tighten that, is we've got a really good way of securing the start and the end of that piece of material. We can then put it uh, into our retort stand uh, as we would normally, so I'm just going to hang that over there. We can then measure the initial length, uh, and then what we can do is we can start to apply uh, masses onto this. So there's a weight, so there's going to be a force being applied to it, and what we can then do is investigate its behaviour as it's loaded. And of course, this thing here works really well, and you might want to do something similar if you're testing a certain sample of rubber, which might give you a much better value for the initial length of that rubber that's being tested. Now, if we were to continue doing this, and we were to look at the total length, take off the initial length, we might find a graph that looks much more like this. We have this large region where we have a large extension even though a big force isn't being applied onto it. And this is actually going to be some plastic deformation. What's actually happening inside is we have these kind of uh, chains of long polymers which all jumble together, and they all start to sort of align. And then we get this long region here that you can see on the graph where everything starts to sort of pull before it finally breaks. The kind of thing that you might uh, relate this to is if you have a piece of chewing gum and you pull it, you can get it to go a really long way. We get a large extension for a small force being applied. And you find exactly the same thing if you've got a polymer. So that's just a couple of ways in which you can investigate 
uh, a material like a polymer. In this case, it's just some plastic from a plastic bag. And of course, you can also investigate the behavior of rubber.